Welcome back to Predicting the NFL with Mickey G. It is now time to recap Week 9. Now, this was a very fun and exciting week because the Jaguars did not lose. Considering they also did not have a game, uh, it's quite easy for them to not lose. Uh, now, I went 1-2 uh, and two in my special games this week, and that's not a very good thing. I'm not very proud of that at all. No, I'm not. Uh... The upset, I picked the Broncos to beat the Texans. Uh, they were close. They almost had it. Lost 19-17. Um, so they had a nice hard-fought battle, but Case was unable to bring it all the way home. Uh, then we have the Crap Fest, which I got right. It was the only one that I got right of the three. And that was the um, the Raiders had three points. Um, so all they had to do, all the 49ers had to do was have four. And they instead had 34. So they easily won that game in our great Thursday night uh, game. And then the game of the week, I was incorrect, but I'm okay with it. Um, because the Rams, they did not beat the Saints. But I'm okay with the Saints winning. This was one of the games where I was like, I'll go with the Rams here. They haven't lost yet, kind of a thing. Uh, but I'm glad Breezes and Fam have uh, won the game. Uh, it shows that they're truly going to show us all how the Saints do this year. Um, the Chiefs... Uh, played the Browns, and I feel bad for the Browns. It was their first game without Hugh Jackson, so they're trying to, like, prove, hey, now we can be good or something. But considering the fact that uh, they're playing the Chiefs, quite hard to do. So they were not able to win this game, and the Chiefs won it considerably. Uh, next is our really stupid game of the week, the the Jets and the Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins, they won by uh, seven points, but this was just a sad game for sports fans since... It was just not exciting to watch. Then we have the Steelers and the uh, Ravens. A good rivalry, and it came down to only a touchdown. So it was a fun, exciting game for those teams there, and I uh, good stuff for them. Bears, they completely annihilated the the Bills, considering the fact that the Bills had Nathan Peterman as the quarterback. Okay. Now, I learned something this week. I learned something very important. I learned that the quarterback, the greatest quarterback in NFL history, is back on an NFL roster. Yes, that's right. Get excited, everyone. You know who that man is. That man is obviously Matt Barkley. That's right. Matt Barkley is back on a football team. Now, sadly, that team is the Buffalo Bills. Okay? But, also a good thing that's the Buffalo Bills. Because this is probably the team that has the best chance of getting the chance to prove that he's the best quarterback in the NFL. The issue is, however, um, Josh Allen may be back this week. So, he could be the starting quarterback. But if his shoulder's not feeling all right, then they'll be, hopefully they're like, oh, we'll throw Derek Anderson in there. Now, this is also only if Derek Anderson has cleared concussion protocol. And then the third option is Nathan Peterman. They'd still rather start Nathan Peterman over my man's Matt Barkley, which is just sad for all of us out here that believe in Mr. Matt. Okay. So the goal is here. Josh Allen, make him rest a couple more weeks. They have bye next week, I'm pretty sure. So the thing is, he'll be able to have another week or so to rest up, to heal, come back, and throw bad passes or something. Derek Anderson, I love the guy. Big fan. But not doing that great this year. Plus, you know, you don't want to mess with your head, man. That's how people get CTE and stuff. He stays out. All right? Nate Peterman, he sucks. Just why is he on an NFL team? There's no reason for it. He's literally thrown like three interceptions in every game he's ever played. Okay? It could literally be like two halves. Not like two halves. It could literally be one half or a quarter. Or half of a quarter, he will probably still throw like two or three interceptions because of the fact simply that he is Nathan Peterman. Uh, so then the fourth guy, the man, the myth, the legend himself, Matt Barkley. That's what we want to go out there to bring the Bills victory. I don't know if it'll happen, but I hope it does. Then there was the Chargers. They beat up on the uh, Seahawks. Not too poorly, though. So And then there's the Patriots who proved that they are the Patriots once again and annihilated the Packers. And uh, sadly, on our Monday night game, the Titans were able to come off with a victory against the Cowboys. Very, very disappointed in your Cowboys. I trusted you, and you let me down. Then there was the Buccaneers. Fitzpatrick, Fitzmagic, my man, the myth, legend. He's back. Threw about four touchdowns. Sadly, it was not enough to beat the Panthers, whose two out of their first three touchdowns were by guys that I'd never heard of, and the third was uh, McCaffrey. They had three rushing touchdowns, none of them by Cam, and it was very, very exciting stuff. 
Uh, then we had the Falcons, who annihilated the Redskins. Now, like I said before, the Redskins are a team that I can never quite understand. They're expected to be mediocre, and they pretend to not be. And then they're expected to be good, and they pretend to be mediocre, which they are. Now, the idea here is for them not to be mediocre, but that will probably not happen anytime soon. Uh, then we had the Vikings absolutely annihilate uh, the Lions. In fact, they got another big man touchdown. So good job for you. Now that's really all we have uh, for the week. Besides the fact that I went nine and four, but I forgot to mention, which brings the total now to eighty-two and fifty-two. Quite exciting stuff there. Five and four in the game of the week. Four and five in the upset of the week, and the six and three in the crap fest. Usually quite easy to figure out. Let's move on to the predictions. Now, the first game we have listed here is the Jaguars and Indianapolis. Now, the hope here, the hope and pray here, the Jaguars end their losing streak and start getting back on track. Now, Leonard is playing this week, so this is very important to note, okay? If Leonard is playing possibly, quite possibly, they could actually play well, and that is what we need. They need another fire back into their bones, kick it up into gear, so that when they play the Steelers, which just got kicked out of the Sunday night game, um, that they'll win and continue their uh, winningness against the Steelers. That is the goal. That is the goal here. Plus, I'd want them to win out so they can possibly make a wild card. Also, be very nice. So please, please and thank you, Jacksonville, to not do what the Raiders did. We have be really good one year and then just fall in a deep decline right into the dirt. Okay, don't do that. It would make me very sad. If I didn't make it clear, I'm picking the Jaguars to win here. Jaguars win. Uh, the next game is the Bills at the New York Jets. Now, this is a very fun game. And no, it is not the Crab Fest, but thank you for asking. Um, the Bills, like I said before, I just talked a lot about their quarterback situation. Um, but it is not going to be the man, the myth, legend, Barkley. Unless he, someone gets hurt and he goes in the game and throws like a touchdown or something. Or does what he does. Um, but instead... It's not, so I can't, in good conscience, pick any of the previous quarterbacks to win a football game. So the Jets get a win here. Good for them. Uh, then is their Patriots at the Titans. And I hope and I pray that the Patriots absolutely annihilate the Titans. Because if they do, and the Jaguars win, back with the same record in the division. All the Jaguars have to do is win and have the Titans lose, or the next time they play, be the Titans, then it's even. And they gotta figure other things out. I don't know. But the goal here is that the Jaguars do win and the Titans do lose. And then everything is all good and dandy. So, Patriots win there. Then we have the Chargers at the Raiders. Chargers? Good. Raiders? Bad. Therefore, Chargers win. Good job, everyone. Uh, then we have our game of the week. That is right, my friends. This is gonna be a fun one here. We have a battle of running backs right here. It's the Panthers with Christian McCaffrey facing off against the Steelers. With the man, the myth, the legend, James Connors. Okay, James Connors doing a great job this year, absolutely annihilating the defenses and performing even better than Le'Veon Bell did last year. So great job to my man, Mr. Connor. Plus, represent D10. Um, so this is going to be a fun game. Now the thing is, it's in Pittsburgh, so we have to think about the home field advantage here, and the fact that the Steelers have been playing quite well, and we got a nice quick sneak peek of uh, what could possibly be the Steelers' future with uh, Josh Dobbs. Throwing a nice 22-yard pass on an audible, mind you, on his own 5-yard line. So, when Ben got hurt and he came in, made a great play. So, in case someone, something gets hurt, Ben, then they have the weapons already on offense. Set up a quarterback, and if he does what he did there, he can show. He's a smart man, and he can make plays. Um, so, enough about the Steelers, enough about the Panthers. Gotta pick the Steelers here. They're on a hot streak right now. They're doing quite well. Let's keep that going. Next, we have the Saints at the Bengals. Now, the Saints come off a great hot game here. I should have picked them. They are in the Superdome. They don't lose in the Superdome. These are things you have to know. Um, against the Bengals, who aren't doing as well as they were doing, but they're still doing decently well. But this is the Saints who beat the undefeated Rams, so we got to go with them here. Saints get the win. Next, we have the Falcons at the Browns. Now, this is an interesting game. The Falcons have been very underperforming, okay? But the Browns have also been the Browns. But the Browns are looking up. And this is their second game without Hugh Jackson. And not against the Chiefs. So there's probably going to play a decent game here. That's what I'm expecting. But this is a Falcons team who had a great week last week. I think they continue this trend. And they beat the Browns. Good for you. Plus, 
Julio Jones got his first touchdown of the season. Congratulations, my friend. Great job. Uh, next, we have the Cardinals at the Chiefs. Um, Josh Rosen, I like you, man. Big fan. Not a big, big fan of Zamuth Barkley, but still a big fan nonetheless. A man's Chiefs. You're going to beat him. That's all I need to say. Moving on. The Dolphins at the Green Bay Packers. Now, it's a Dolphins team who've got their first win in a long time. So, congratulations on that. This is a Green Bay team that tried to hang with the Patriots. And they got close. They did well. They did all right. But they were not able to continue the victory. So I think they bounce back here. They play hard and they play fast. And Aaron Rodgers throws a Hail Mary. So, Packers win. Next, in, we have, the starting the NFC games, we have the Lions at the Bears. The Lions just played horribly against the Vikings. And the Bears had a great game. A fun, frolicking game in the wind against the Bills. So I think the Bears sit high and dry. Proud of their accomplishments. Go on and take out the Lions. Good for you. Next, we have the Redskins at the Tampa Buccaneers. Now, this is Fitzmagic's first game back against a team that's not very good. I mean, they're right, but the Redskins, and I had talked before, very mediocre. However, they're pretending to be a high cobbler team. So I think the Buccaneers go out there. My man's Jameis throws a lot of touchdowns. But I just can't. I feel like the Redskins, they're going to pull something out of their butt, and the defense for Buccaneers is just horrendous. So I think we might go out here. I might have to go with the Redskins. This is going to be a very tough game to call, though. Next, we have the Seahawks at the Rams. Seahawks are playing a lot better than expected. Started out a little slow. But now they're kind of picking up their pace here, playing decently, having good games and stuff. But these are the Rams. They just come off their first loss. They're going to be angry. They're going to be righteous and angry. Righteous anger does not mix well, okay, with other teams. So they're going to go out there. They're going to punch them in the mouth. They're going to knock them out, and they're going to fight them and stuff. The Rams are going to win. Congratulations. Then we have the Cowboys at the Eagles. Now the Cowboys, the Cowboys let me down. The loss of the Titans, not a big fan. The Eagles, the Eagles are trying to prove that they deserve the NFC East. They're not quite there yet. They need the Redskins to lose in order to do that. But if they keep winning, the Redskins will eventually fall, and they can pick up and take where they left off. The Eagles go out there. They play tough. They play hard. They play hard in Philly, and they beat the Dallas Cowboys. And finally, our Monday night game. Another great game that we all would wish to see on primetime. The Giants at the 49ers. Now, 49ers had a very exciting game last week. They played well. They played hard. They played fast. And they had a random quarterback that no one has ever heard of. So that's good for them. And then there's the Giants. Giants have been playing hard. They're like, eventually, we will win. We have Saquon. Everyone likes Saquon. You can't tell me that you don't like Saquon. Fine. If you don't like Saquon, be like that. Gee, but what I'm telling you is he's a good player. Odell's a bomb. And Eli Manning is a Super Bowl winning quarterback. These are all the components you need for a successful football team. Put them together, you get a win. So I think the guys go out there and they're proud of themselves. And they get a, another W on the season. That was all for this week. I'm not sure if you noticed, but I have a strange accent. I don't know why it's happening. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy. And as always, adios.